I think that Odin has got it all. He, he's dominant defensively. He's seven feet tall. He plays 7-4. He's mobile. He can move laterally. He can block shots and rebound. I think he's got the complete package. I think this kid is way more advanced than Patrick Ewing was as a freshman, way more advanced than Tim Duncan was, was a, as a freshman, and I do think he's a no-brainer as the number one pick. I think a very close second is Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant is a superstar. He's a, a scoring savant that will lead the league in scoring at some point. Those two no-brainers in the top two. The next Yao Ming. Let's start with you. Kevin Garnett was the big talk the last three days. Trades to three different places. Why hasn't he moved up to this point? And will he move on draft night? Going Stephen A. Let me be very clear about this when I say this about the greatest player that I've ever seen in Michael Jordan. He makes that deal. That's just stupid. Here's a trade announcement and a pick announcement all at once. We have a trade. The Boston Celtics trade. Wally Serbiak and Delonte West and the draft rights to Jeff Green, number five, to the Seattle Supersonics for Ray Allen and the draft rights to Glenn Davis, number 35. A lot to digest there. Come back to Boston. If Boston ends up with Ray Allen in a deal, what do you think about that? Well, I don't like it. I think you look on paper and you see the name Ray Allen, and all of a sudden you say, wow, Ray Allen on the Celtics. No, this is a 32-year-old about to be shooting guard. Sure, he's a stellar player, but this is the same brass that thought that Antoine Walker in his prime and, and Paul Pierce in his prime wouldn't work. These are two guys that need the basketball. A bad choice. Now we hear what it's all about. New York City. Madison Square Garden. I haven't been asleep for like a week. Just knowing June 28th, when June 28th gets here, the NBA draft will be here. The 2007 NBA draft was a night of the future that had big ramifications into the next 15 years of what the NBA looks like. Let's take a look at who's at the top of the draft and introduce the stars. The number one prospect in this year's draft by a thin margin is one Greg Oden. The at the time freshman sensation is fresh off a dominant season at Ohio State as the best player on the national runner up and in the championship game against some guys we'll discuss a little bit later, he was a th problem. He averaged 15, 9, and 3 blocks a game. And the stats don't really pop off the screen, but buddy, the eye test. That eye test was something serious. And per 40 minutes, you're looking at 21, 13, and four and a half blocks a game. And at the time, the big man was still the king of the NBA. Coming off another Spurs title and Shaq's dominant run at the beginning of the 2000s, Greg Oden was in line to become the NBA's next franchise big man. Next after Greg Oden, we have the player of the year, all of the player of the years, Kevin Durant. We all know who KD is now, but in 2007, Kevin Durant was a baby assassin. He swept damn near all of the Player of the Year awards. Like, literally. He was the AP, Naismith, NABC, USBWA, Wooden Award winner, Big 12 Player of the Year, Big 12 Rookie of the Year. He was everything, bro. Every award you could think of, he damn near won that. Every Player of the Year award, a Rookie of the Year award, KD had it. KD got all of it. In 35 games in Texas, KD averaged 25 points by chipping in 11 boards and getting two blocks and two steals a game while shooting a ridiculous 47% from the field and an even crazier 40% from three. KD was absolutely different. Some folks had him as the number one pick in this year's draft with good reason, and the detractors were really concerned about his frame and him not being able to be traditionally strong. And they were worried that him not being traditionally strong wouldn't allow his skill set to transfer over. After the top two, it was a mixed bag as to who would be three through ten. So here's the guys after the top two. Next up, we got Mike Conley, the franchise point guard of this draft class. Mike was the lead guard at Ohio State alongside Greg Oden. And while Greg was dominant, Mike also got his game off, and he was one of the fastest players in the country that was highly skilled and mature beyond his years at the time. He was the orchestrator for that team, a guy who always made the right play and won Ohio State a bunch of games with his play. On the season, he averaged 11 points, 6 assists, and 2 steals a game while shooting 51% from the field and 30% from 3. Big Al, Al Horford, the versatile power forward slash center who's coming off of back-to-back -back national championships with the Florida Gators. Al's bag is deep. 
He's a monster defensively and ultra aggressive on both ends as a shot blocker and equal parts as a rebounder. And also sprinkle into his mix a bit of real deal skill with the ability to put the ball on the floor comfortably and his ability to grow as a passer alongside his really, really good post-up game. Corey Brewer. A versatile swingman who is very effective in multiple facets of the game, he could defend his tail off. Super athletic with some skill offensively as a passer and a slasher. He's a spotty shooter though, but he was a key part in the Florida Gators back-to-back -back national championships. We got Uncle Jeff, Jeff Green, another versatile wing who kind of differs from Corey Brewer in the sense that he leans more towards offense. He can shoot it, he can put the ball on the floor, he can get to the basket, and he has a really good knack for passing the basketball. But he does struggle with being aggressive offensively at times with the tools that he has, and that is his main detractor. Joe Kim Noah. Joe Kim Noah is a guy who could legitimately have been the number one pick in the 2006 draft, but he came back to college to win the second national championship with his guys Corey Brewer and Al Horford. The reason he failed in this year's draft is two reasons. This is just overall a better class than 06, and in his junior season, he showed some of the warts within his game with his underdeveloped offense and problems with handling the pressure of being the target of all the criticism that Florida went through on their quest to another championship. Next in the lottery, we got E. Gian Leon, the top international prospect in this year's draft. E. was touted as the next Yao Ming by Time Magazine in 2003. Why, you may ask though. E was propped up to be the next Chinese NBA superstar. He had the size and the athleticism to stand out at a young age. But, but, but. There's some question to his age, right? In the aforementioned Time article, it was pointed out here. So, when might E. Gian Leon don an NBA uniform? That depends on the biggest mystery of all, his age. The national junior team roster says E was born on October 27, 1987, which will make him 15 and not eligible for the draft independently as an international player until 2009. Several well-placed Chinese basketball experts say he is 17 or 18. They some manipulated for junior competitions, which China counts on to increase his international prestige. E and both of his parents say on the record that he was born in 1987, but when pressed on the issue, E turns away and fills the room with uncomfortable silence, and his father smiles blankly without responding. So yeah, do with that information what you will. So at the time in 2007 of the draft, he could either be 19 or he could be 22, which is massively important in terms of the development of a relatively raw prospect. And among others in attendance, you had Spencer Hawes from Washington, A.C. Lauder Ford from Texas A&M, Brandon Wright from North Carolina, Julian Wright from Kansas, Al Thornton from Florida State, and the swag champ Nick Young from USC. The first pick in the 2007 NBA draft will be made by the Portland Trailblazers, who have five minutes to make their selection. With the first pick... In the 2007 NBA Draft, the Portland Trailblazers select Greg Oden from Ohio State University. With the number one pick, the Portland Trailblazers take Greg Oden, the guy at the top of the board, a player who fits into the Blazers' young core that featured the likes of Brandon Roy and LaMarcus Aldridge. But, unfortunately, Greg's career was marred by injuries. His rookie season, he missed due to microfracture surgery in his knee. Zero regular season games played. Second season, he played in 61 games, and he showed flashes of what the potential was hitting on, with games like 24 points, 15 boards, with two steals and two blocks. Greg was solid in his delayed rookie season, averaging eight points and seven rebounds a game. But, he was on and off the court. He played his first game, then he missed two weeks. He played a handful of games, and then proceeded to miss 14 games. But he did finish the season very, very strong and built some momentum going into his third season. He seemed to be turning it around and being productive in the supportive role next to Brandon Royal and Marcus Aldridge. Per 36, Greg was the only big man in the NBA to average 16 points, 12 rebounds, and three blocks a game. Unfortunately, Greg ended up fracturing his left patella, and that ended his season and essentially ended the whole first half of his career. He ended up retiring from the NBA in 2014 after playing one season with the Miami Heat. The entire Greg situation is just like, it's a heavy situation. Like, I went back to watch these games in college from everybody and Greg was completely dominant, bro. Like, he had the potential to be really one of them ones, like for real. 
He moves super well for somebody his size and his skill level. You can just see the potential bubbling in his game. His ability to go stretches in the game and dominate on both ends of the floor. And bro, when I tell you, everybody in the game was talking about how good he could have been or how good he was going to be. He was compared to every legendary big man besides Shaq and Will Chamberlain. He was compared to Bill Russell in high school. So like when when we go back in history and talk about Greg Oden, let's talk let's not talk about him like he was some non-factor in this class and everything like that. Obviously the pick didn't work out because he got hurt, but the Blazers weren't dumb. Greg Oden wasn't a bust. He was just unfortunate. And the worst thing about this is that this is a legitimate young person that had to go through all of this, through all the injuries and setbacks and coming up short of the amount of expectations that were placed upon his shoulders. Hope you're doing all right, Greg. With the second pick in the 2007 NBA draft, the Seattle Supersonics select Kevin Durant from the University of Texas. With the second pick, the Seattle Sonics selected Kevin Durant. And they had the easy choice. They didn't have too much of the pressure. Just taking the player that the Blazers did. In nine seasons with the Sonic slash Thunder, this is where Kevin Durant became a superstar. He did a ton of winning. Won an MVP, went to the finals, multiple conference finals appearances, and helped cultivate a core of a real NBA title contender. He did eventually move on to the Golden State Warriors, where he elevated his game to help them win two NBA titles, and he won two finals MVPs. And now he's trying to win another in the twilight of his career. Kevin Durant is a first ballot Hall of Famer, two-time NBA champ, two-time finals MVP, NBA MVP, 10-time All-NBA, 12-time All-Star, Rookie of the Year, four-time scoring champ, and part of the NBA 75. Four. Kevin Durant, in his entire 15-season career in the NBA to this point, he hasn't had a season where he's averaged less than 20 points a game. That is nuts. Along with all of these numbers, as basketball fans, we all realize Kevin Durant is probably one of the greatest players to ever walk the planet. Like, and he's given us a ton of moments and performances that will live forever in our hearts. And obviously, Kevin Durant is the best player in this NBA draft class. Since we have Kevin Durant and Greg Oden, uh, two top talents, what we, what we decided to do is take a look at franchise players. We've got a tailor to um, do some measurements, you know, because it's all about being tailor-made for a team. It's nice, man. I like it. Every time you, you see the light go off, just change it up a little bit. With this hat, I look good. With the third pick in the 2007 NBA Draft, the Atlanta Hawks select Al Horford from the Dominican Republic and the University of Florida. At number three overall, the Hawks prior to picking here were in conversations to drop this and a number 11 pick. Nothing came of these conversations, so the Hawks decided to take who they thought was the best player available. That happened to be Al Horford. And despite having drafted four other forwards in the past draft, they still decided to take another one. And he happened to be the best one of that bunch. Coming out of college, Al Horford was highly skilled, versatile, with room to grow into a highly valuable player. Did Al ever become a superstar or a star? No. But... He's a very good player who's been an all-star five times. All NBA wants, all defense wants, and still today is a vital part of a championship contending team. At the same time, Marvin Williams, Sheldon Williams, Josh Smith, Josh Children, you draft an Al Hoffman is too much of a similarity to what you already have. This is a bad decision for the Atlanta Hawks. With the fourth pick in the 2007 NBA draft, the Memphis Grizzlies select Michael Conley from Ohio State University. 
The Grizzlies at number four decided to select Mike Conley. Mike who was a showrunner at Ohio State with Greg Oden. After a few seasons of development with the Grizzlies, he eventually became their franchise point guard. And not just like a fly-by-night one that's just like your regular old starter. Despite only having one all-star appearance, Mike was the guy who stirred the drink for the grand grind Grizzlies that were contenders in the West yearly from about 2011 to 2016, who knocked off the one seed, went to the Western Conference Finals multiple times, and up to even today, in the latter half of his career, he's still a serviceable point guard who provides value with his shooting and his playmaking. At number five overall, the Boston Celtics select Jeff Green. This pick was a part of the start of the Boston Celtics championship run. They selected Jeff Green for the Sonics, and in return, they got Ray Allen, and that would eventually turn into Kevin Garnett to form the big three and form the mold of the modern super team. Now, as far as Jeff... He's been a really, really good role player for a ton of teams in the NBA. He's played for 14 different teams in 14 different years, and he overcame a heart condition early in his career, beat that, is still in the NBA today. And shout out to them DMV boys, man. Them DMV boys need to stand up, you feel me? With the sixth pick in the 2007 NBA draft, the Milwaukee Bucks select E. Jian Lian from China and the Dung Dung Tigers. While Greg Oden was the biggest what if of this draft class, the Milwaukee Bucks selecting E. Jian Lian was quite confusing, bro. Okay, so like we discussed earlier, E had a ton of questions surrounding him. First, and hilariously, his pre draft workout that he hosted, contrary to the normal process where prospects go to the team, they teams went to go see him. He matched up in his workout with a chair. He did his thing, he did things of that nature. But outside of that, the mystery of his age was still out to be determined, which in fact turned to be a farce. He was 22, not 19. So that's a thing, right? The Bucks still selected in him anyway. And the biggest, the biggest why would you do this for the Bucks is that E his team didn't even want to go to Milwaukee because of the lack of the Asian population and things of that nature. So why as a team, if you know a prospect has questions about his age, very raw, and does not want to play for your team, why would you pick him? Why? For what reason? I have no clue. It didn't turn out well. E eventually got traded after one season with the Bucks, bounced around the NBA for a few years after two seasons with New Jersey and one with the Wizards. After that, he was out of the NBA by 2012. Why would the Bucks do this? I don't know. On to the next one. So dumb. Skipping a couple picks down the board, the Chicago Bulls drafted their anchor throughout the early to mid 2010s, Joe Kim Noah. The final player in the trio of the national champions from the University of Florida turned himself into the heart and soul of the Chicago Bulls within the time when Derrick Rose was winning the MVP and they had multiple conference finals appearances. Joe Kim individually won a defensive player of the year, was all NBA one time, a two time all star, and considering who was selected between picks five and eight, I would say he's a steal. And also, I said this a little bit earlier, but Joe Kim really could have been the first pick in 06. Imagine that, bro. Like, I don't know if that would have worked out well, but with the, with, the, with the Raptors and what all that was going on. But that's crazy to think about. And a fun fact, fun fact. While this draft doesn't tout the highest amount of superstars or all-stars, it does have a boatload of great role players and one all-star player that was drafted in the second round. The run on these guys starts at number 10. The Kings selected Spencer Hawes, who played about 10 years in the league with six different teams. At number 12, the Sixers picked Thaddeus Young, a high-value role player who's still active to this day and has he's been a good player. Three picks later, we've got Roddy Stuckey, who, funny enough, his nickname is Curtis Jackson Jr. and Young 50, according to basketball reference, I guess, because he has some shocking resemblance to 50 Cent. Um, but other than that, he got buckets in the league for about 10 years, most of those years being with the Pistons. The pick after Rodney was the man, the myth, the legend, Nick Young from USC, 
who interestingly enough had a documentary on his journey from almost not making it through high school through his freshman year at USC all the way up to him being drafted by the Wizards. And also aside from Nick Young being a productive player for a bunch of years in the league, he's a part of one of the funniest duos in NBA history. Yeah, so he was he was my he was my rookie and I just made him do all the things I didn't want to do. Yeah, um, he only obeyed when there there was Right, women one time involved. My dad, oh, it's only women one time. Yeah, only like, one I'm time. going to the strip club. You want to go? Yeah, I want to go. No, no, no. I'm going to drive, I'm gonna drive you. That, stop, I mean, that bro. was those stop, That was stop. those things. Like, he only did that. If I stop. said, yo, can Come you on, go man. get this? You know, can you go to the store and, and buy me something? he will go to the store, buy me what I want, what but then he will charge he three or four more thousand dollars on my phone. Three, you know, four thousand more yeah. dollars? He asked me to get him my phone. I said, I need one too, so I bought me an iPhone, <laughs> laptop. Did you really? Hell yeah, bro. Back. No, hell no. Uh, you just had to you fix it. You took the wheels right, off his car? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wheels off my car and rolled them into film and <laughs> like that. Like, rolled them into film? <laughs> have field day, you know? Like, that was <laughs> like, why didn't they do nothing? And the rest of the first round includes guys like Marco Bellinelli, a sharpshooter who played for a really, really long time in the NBA, Jason Smith, a backup big man, infamous Jared Dudley, Wilson Chandler, Aaron Brooks, Aaron Aflalo, and the world famous Tiago Splitter before this draft. Unless something good happen, and, you know, I'm playing with Gilbert now. <laughs> <laughs> the second round of the 07 draft housed one of the best players in the actual draft. But first, we start on this run with Carl Landry, Josh McRoberts, and Gray and Ramon Sessions. Also, Glenn Big Baby Davis, who was a key role player for those Celtic teams with the Big Three, with the Magic, and a role player with the Clippers towards the end of, the end of his career. And also, after his career, he is a funny mother. Good Lord, that's what I'm going to say. Might be legal, man. A lot of jump shots. A whole lot of jump shots. Papa Chicken. With the 48th pick in the 2007 NBA Draft, the Los Angeles Lakers select Marc Gasol from Barcelona, Spain. Yes, this might have been the most impactful pick of this draft when discussing the immediate future of what the NBA looked like, right? The reason I say that is, even though this is the night where the Celtics' big three was started, the trade for Ray Allen and all that stuff, it turned into the trade for Kevin Garnett and things of that nature. But this pick of Marc Gasol, alongside with the 19th pick in Javaris Crittenton, alongside Kwame Brown, landed the Lakers' pal Gasol from the Memphis Grizzlies. And the rest is history. We all know the rest, right? The Lakers get, get pal Gasol. Him and Kobe form this dynamic duo. They add some more pieces around them. And they win two championships in three seasons afterwards, right? And for the Grizzlies, they get the upside on this as well because Marc Gasol turned into an all-star player and a defensive player of the year and a core part of those teams that were really contending in the mid to late 2010s. Did L.A. give up too much to get a guy who has been labeled soft, although he puts up 19 and 9, which only 11 other guys do? Is that a trick question? You tell me. They gave up Kwame Brown. Two who first cares? rounders. I could, I could care less. Tied into his salary for four First years. of all, understand something. When you're giving up first round picks, if you are a quality team in, play, in playoff contention, it really doesn't mean that much. That's number one. Number two, and more importantly, Kwame Brown is gone. The City of Angels, Hollywood, just should be celebrated. Throw a parade already, whether you win a championship or not. This man was a bona fide scrub. He can't play. No disrespect whatsoever, but I'm sorry to call tell everybody the truth the man cannot play the game of basketball the 2007 nba draft was one of the first of its kind one of the first ones where there was a bunch of hyped up one and done prospects like we see today guys like kevin durant greg Oden, mike conley brandon wright and nick young were all hyped up to be the next superstars to go into the nba being one and done from college with this draft, we also got one of the biggest what-ifs in NBA history with Greg Oden, as well as a Hall of Famer in KD, and plenty of quality players in league-altering trades. And all this is for a draft that gets kind of forgotten. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay cozy.